In this present video titled Electrostatics Part 1, we will be studying about electric charges and electric field. It has been a matter of common observation that an ordinary plastic scale when rubbed with our hair or skin acquires property of attracting small bits of paper towards itself. Similarly, a glass rod rubbed with silk or ebonite rod rubbed with fur or cat skin attracts pieces of paper, thread and other light materials towards themselves and we say that these substances have acquired electric charge. Basically, electric charge is an intrinsic property of elementary constituents of matter that is the electrons and protons which result in the electric force between the bodies. In electrostatics, we deal with the charges at rest or stationary charges. Further studies show that there are two different types of electric charge termed as positive charge and negative charge. The observations which led to classification of charge are shown here. If we take a charged glass rod that is glass rod rubbed with silk and suspend it with a thread and bring another charged rod glass rod near it there is a force of repulsion. Similarly a charged ebonite rod held close to another charged ebonite rod. CER here stands for charged ebonite rod. Again we see a repulsive force but a charged ebonite rod when brought near a charged glass rod, there is a force of attraction. Hence, the charge on glass rod is different from charge on ebonite rod. So, the charge developed on glass rod rubbed with silk is called positive charge. The charge developed on ebonite rod rubbed with fur is called negative charge. The charges basically always appear in pairs. When the glass rod acquires positive charge, silk acquires equal negative charge. Similarly, development of negative charge on ebonite rod results in an equal positive charge on fur or cat skin. Now here is a list of certain objects and this is an ordered list that is fur, flannel, glass, cotton, silk. If you take any pair, the former when rubbed with the later will acquire positive charge and the later will acquire negative charge. So same object may acquire positive or negative charge. Glass rubbed with silk will acquire positive charge whereas glass rubbed with fur will acquire negative charge. Why do charges appear? That is, what is the basic theory of electrification? The charges appear because of electron transfer. Whenever we rub two dissimilar substances, one of the two has a greater attraction for the electrons. So some electrons shift from one object to another object. The object which gains electrons acquires negative charge. Example in this pair glass silk some electrons are transferred from glass to silk. So silk gains electrons acquiring negative charge. Glass rod loses electrons therefore acquires positive charge. Let's now study the different methods of producing electric charge. One of the methods and the most earliest used for charging was by friction. When we rub a glass rod with silk as studied earlier, the glass rod acquires positive charge and silk acquires an equal amount of negative charge. The charge can also be produced on a body by conduction method. If you want to charge a body B, you need another charged body A. We bring the two bodies in contact, some charge from A gets transferred to B, then the bodies are separated. 
and each of the bodies will carry some charge. The total charge on A and B will be equal to the charge initially possessed by A. Here by conduction the charge acquired by B is of same nature as that on the charged body A. The third method is charging by induction and before we actually study the method it's worthwhile to study what electric induction is. The first diagram here figure A explains the phenomena of electric induction. If we have an object AB and bring another charged object near it here CGR is charged glass rod this is positively charged rod. If we bring this rod near end A of AB the rod pulls some electrons from end B to end A. Therefore end A has excess of electrons and end B has deficiency of electrons. A acquires negative charge and B acquires positive charge. This process of accumulation of charges at the ends of, a, of an object due to nearness of another charged object is called electric induction. So if you have a negatively charged rod instead of glass rod if you bring a negatively charged ebonite rod then it will repel some electrons from A to B. So B will have excess of electrons in that case and A will have a deficiency of electrons. The nearer end of the rod that is this end will acquire opposite charge. This is positive, this is negative. If this is negative, this end will become positive. And the farther end acquires similar charge. Charging by induction is a four step process. If you want to develop negative charge by induction, you need a positive rod. And if you want to develop positive charge, you will need a negative rod. Now in this diagram, we have four steps A, B, C and D by which we will be developing negative charge of the body using induction process. Step one is take a positively charged rod and bring it near end A. This end acquires negative charge and end B acquires positive charge. In step 2 we connect end B to earth. The positive charge at end B flows to earth. The negative charge remains in position because it is bound by this positive charge. In next step we remove the earth contact. The negative charge still remains here because it is bound by the charged glass rod. So remember in step 3 the rod should still be in position. First we have to remove this ground contact and then finally in step 4 we remove even this rod. The negative charge at end A becomes free and is distributed evenly on the rod and the rod acquires negative charge. It will be worthwhile for you to draw the four diagrams in order to develop positive charge by induction process. Now remember these are some properties of electric charge. Charge is additive in nature. That is if you give charges in steps to a body like charge Q1 then Q2, Q3 and so on the total charge acquired by the body will be algebraic sum of the charges. That is the signs positive or negative are to be taken into consideration. Another important characteristic of charge is it is quantized. That is the charge on a body will always be an integral multiple of a minimum charge that is the electron charge. This is so because when you rub two objects, either one electron or two or three or four or ten and so on, fraction of charge, electron charge is not possible. Only whole number of electrons can be transferred. Therefore, the charge developed will be plus minus E or plus minus 2E or plus minus 3E and so on. 
that is the charge on a body Q is always plus minus N E where N is an integer. The charge on electron is given by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and is the smallest charge capable of independent existence. However, the charge E being small, the quantization is ignored at macroscopic level because the number of electrons involved is extremely large and this charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb at macroscopic level hardly makes any tangible or detectable difference. Third property is the charge is always conserved that is the total charge on an isolated system always remains constant. You can only transfer charge from one object to another. We cannot produce or destroy electric charge. The quantization and conservation, these are termed as the fundamental properties of electric charge. Remember, whenever the charges develop on, a, on bodies, then one of the objects requires positive charge and the other requires equal amount of negative charge. So total charge before electrification process and after electrification process remains zero in case of charging by friction. Similarly, by other methods also, the charge on an isolated system always remains constant. The nearer end of the paper acquires opposite charge and the farther end acquires similar charge. Since the opposite charges or unlike charges attract, therefore the piece of paper is pulled by a child rod. Hence we can say induction precedes attraction. Second question, list any four properties of electric charge. The properties of charge are it is a determined nature, the charge is quantized, the charge always remains conserved when we consider an isolated system, the similar charges or like charges repel and unlike charges attract. Question number three, compare electric charge and mass. Some of the points for comparison of charge and mass are listed here. Number one, charge is conserved. That is the total charge in an isolated system will never change. However, mass can be converted to energy according to Einstein's equation e equal to mc square. So for a system, the mass may not be conserved. The total mass and energy of a system remains conserved and not the total mass. The charge is quantized, that is, it is always an integral multiple of the electron charge, the fundamental charge. But the quantization of mass has not been established so far. Another point of difference between charge and mass is, the charge is independent of speed, whereas mass of a body increases with increase in speed. However, the speed has to be very large, close to speed of light when there is a detectable change in mass of a body. As the speed increases and approaches the speed of light, the mass of the body increases and becomes infinite when C e V equals C. Question number four, how many electrons have to be removed from a body to give it a positive charge of 10 to the power minus 7 coulomb. Let's suppose that n is that unknown number. Then we can use this relation, the total charge equal to n into electron charge. You know q and e, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. You can calculate the value of n. Question number 5. A body on rubbing with another acquires positive charge. Is there any change in its mass? Explain. When the 
charges develop the reason is the transfer of electrons here the body which acquires positive charge loses electrons hence the mass of the body decreases due to loss of electrons